Who exactly are the Arizona Cardinals? Maybe we don't have all the answers yet, but we're going to try to find out. It's another edition of Southwest Bias. Get that stuff out of here. It's Southwest Bias. Coming to you live from Studio K, presented by Circle K. Make sure you join the Inner Circle for free. Download that Circle K app today. Visit CircleK.com for details. It's big time football season, especially with these Arizona Cardinals. And just at one and two, there's a lot of optimism surrounding this team. So, of course, we're diving into it with PHNX Cardinals' own Bo Brock. You want to make sure you check out PHNX Cardinals five days a week, including a pregame halftime Post game show, and they have some fantastic guests on that podcast as well. Bo, if I ask you who the Arizona Cardinals are, your short, simple, sweet answer would be exactly. You're exactly. trying That's to figure that bias. out. Look, I mean, we're three <laughs> games into this, and the Arizona Cardinals they have tight losses to uh, two contending teams, right? Mm-hmm. To open up the season against a wagon in the Buffalo Bills, who are three and zero now, and just beating the holy hell out of their other opponents, not named the Arizona Cardinals. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the the Cardinals just waxing the floor with a perennial thorn in their side in Los Angeles Rams, and then losing a tight one to the Detroit Lions. So as far as trying to break down in one word or less like what the Arizona Cardinals are, they're a team that. Uh, we're still trying to figure it out, right? But I think that they're sh- they've shown that they continue to have that competitiveness that mm-hmm. they had last season when their roster was in way worse shape. So, you know, with good coaching and improved roster, I think you're going to see better results. You have seen better results. Yeah. And I think one and two, like... This is just the start of something, I think, uh, that's going to trend in the right direction. Sometimes records aren't the only thing that reflect what a team is or who they are, right? And there's a lot of one and two teams that I would say across the NFL are not in as good a position as the Cardinals have shown through these first three weeks. I mean, you were leading on the Bills on the road in an early game. Not something that you would expect a team like Arizona to do, especially with how some people were treating them going into this Mm. season. Then, like you said, you dominate the Rams at home. You exercise that demon. And then, you know, you did lose to the Lions, but not to be that guy. You also lost to the refs, right? And usually (laughs) usually you don't want to go out and just use that as a blanket excuse. But in a 20-13 to game, a seven-point game that didn't Mm -hmm. have scores in the second half, and you have a 14-point swing with a two-minute warning in the first half, that is a massive deal. That is something that does change that. If you're starting 2-1, and one, beating the Lions, taking the Bills 34-28, and destroying the Rams, who then went on to beat the 49ers, I mean, I think even nationally, people yeah. are like, oh, wow, these Arizona Cardinals 2-1-1. One, one. But at 1-2, and two, you start to maybe temper some expectations a little bit. I think my heart wants to say, if I could use one word to describe the Arizona Cardinals, it'd be good. But maybe they're not <laughs> there yet. Maybe the word frisky, Bo. Yeah. Frisky might be the perfect word, word to describe this team. I mean, if you're asking my wife, frisky's bad. But if you're asking <laughs> a lot of people, like, frisky can is good, right? As far as, uh, you know, pesky, uh, a lot of different, uh, you know, synonyms you can find for that for that word to describe this team um that y- you will take budding also i like to mm. think of for both the, on the offense and defensive side of the football but you're also looking for consistent right can the arizona cardinals find that consistency uh throughout the rest of the season because that's what really kind of differentiates the good from the bad mm-hmm. like you don't want to ride this wave the entire time all the way to week 18. I think yeah. that would be an emotional roller coaster. You want to kind of lock in, especially I think on the offensive side of the football, which is the strength of this team that fell short and the frustrating end against the Lions team. And you have to start to win some of those games you're not expected to win. Like, sure, the refs screwed you. Like, they called for the first time in NFL history the two minute warning at 201. That's unfortunate. But then to kind of so stupid. to fold as far as like a, a beach chair on third and 12 and give up 14 yards in right. a draw. You have to like, respond to that better. Exactly. You can't just be sitting there and, and you have to be ready for the next play. And I think Jonathan Gannon's going to give his team the tools to do so. Mm-hmm. And that's a brutal learning experience because, as you said, it's a 14-point swing. That's mm-hmm. the difference in the game. The Arizona Cardinals are going to have to continue to learn some tough lessons, but along the way, they're going to have to win some football games as well. And we four presents a very good opportunity to do that even though a great monday night performance by the quarterback and their play caller who (sighs) used to reside here as head coach for four seasons well we're going to give a little tease to later this week (laughs) southwest bias this thursday we're going to be looking at the commanders we're going to be looking at the return of cliff kingsbury and even the return 
of Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Locally, we've got the oh, ASU jersey hanging here? up over there. Yeah, uh, people forget. <laughs> people do forget as he went on to win the Heisman at LSU. You know, you said the Cardinals need to win games, and I think they are in a position that while they're learning and while they're developing and has always been coined a year two of a rebuild, they're absolutely in a position to win some games. But you talk about consistency as well, and that's been what plagued them in their two losses. Mm -hmm. where you have a really strong half or you have a really strong period of time and then you come out and you can't capitalize that completely against the Bills. Your offense gets out to a big lead. It stalls out in the second half. Defense does a flip-flop, right? With the Lions, your defense does more than enough to win you that game. Holding Detroit to 20 points is good. It's very good. But despite the refs, A, you shouldn't have let them go down and score after that that two-minute warning Mm -hmm. call was reversed, and that is on the defense. But then overall on the offense, I mean, 13 points for a team led by Kyler Murray, Marvin Harrison, and we've done so much, including a recent addition of Southwest Bias, talking about how good the talent on this offense Mm -hmm. is. You need to be able to put it together. So on like a minutia scale, when you talk about consistency, Bo, what needs to change for this team in order to be more consistent? Because against Detroit, you could argue it was the run game yeah. needs to be a little bit more consistent. absolutely i mean they were made one dimensional offensively and it put you know i think an offense that is trying to find itself create kind of a rapport between kyler murray and his top playmaker marvin harrison jr that needs a lot of refining right like they they have mm-hmm. to have more and more live reps and you're seeing it you had marvin harrison jr with 11 targets but just five receptions he has to start to kind of chip away at that and sway it more over in, uh, above 50% mm-hmm. as far as how many of those balls he's hauling in because with a couple of those plays becomes sustained drives, chances to cash in for points, right. turning field goals into touchdowns. That's just the, the big part. And obviously you need to eliminate errors, but they're going to happen. The NFL is just too good of a league. And things like the turnover with Kyler Murray, like you want to avoid it. And you want it, you would have we, we would want to take it back, but mm-hmm. sometimes they just happen, right? You have lapses. So the Arizona Cardinals, here's what I'll say though. I, I think that they need to avoid being in the friend zone, right? The friend zone, like you're you're a good person, right? People like you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you they want to be around you, but you you lack that undeniable. Yeah, who hurt me, right? <laughs> the undeniability to to be, you know, oh that that's that's at, the one. That's the one, yeah. right? So they have there's to no show middle that, ground right, there. Like right. it's like oh well, he's fine. You can hang out with him. I don't, right. I don't care. It's like it's harmless. You, you got to be undeniable, and you have to figure out a way to do that. And that's part of this maturation process. That's part about this development. That's year two of a rebuild. But do you want to show that, hey, this new regime is a little bit better than that? They can get it a little bit ahead of schedule mm-hmm. in year two of a rebuild. How do they do that? Winning some of these football games against teams that they're not expected to beat. And you could say the Rams were one of those teams sure. that they didn't expect to be. I, I think on a talent level, when you talk about just this year, it's closer than people would imagine. But when there's the, all the history involved between the two franchises, you would obviously lean in L.A.'s direction anytime yeah. that they play. And of course, they they beat them and they beat them real good. The commanders are falling into that category where... Sure, you can maybe expect the Cardinals to beat them, but it's not going to be an easy game. I mean, we mm-hmm. can make fun of Cl- Cliff Kingsbury all we want. We will. And, and we will. But... <laughs> There, there was there was success there, at least so far through the season. And we did see certain success, especially in the first half of the season with Cliff Kingsbury. Mm-hmm. And so you are getting the first four or five week Cliff Kingsbury, which is a lot tougher than yeah. week 13, 14, 15 Cliff Kingsbury. And so going into this week, I think it's a really good just scale. Like, where are you? How do you handle this game? Detroit, clearly on paper, better than you. Buffalo, clearly on paper better than you. The last time you played a team where it was more of a toss-up, you dominated them. How do you go into this week? Right. But is the answer not just, oh, this short-term thing, Bo, but is it really as simple as to just give them time? And obviously, to see an accelerated timeline is uh, a massive props to the coaches, to the players, but does this team just just need some some time some space to gel Marvin and Kyler this defense continues to play good and play better I mean mm-hmm. you're talking about a team that held back-to-back opponents below 14 points so as time goes on is that all you need for the consistency part that we talked about it earlier to actually catch up with the talent I'd love to just be like you know your dad and just tell you like hey it's gonna be okay buddy just gonna take more time and just pat you on the shoulder and we we're doing we're, this is a patting right. on the shoulder episode but of I, Southwest I understand Bias. that uh, we live in a microwave society like people need to see results and they need to see wins so I would say like yeah like 
realistically, is it going to take time for this thing to to fully bake? Absolutely. But at the same time, you, you got to show something. And you can't fall mm-hmm. short against the head coach that you sent packing uh, before his new extension even you know, kicked in. You're still paying Cliff Kingsbury a lot of money to yeah. go coach offensive football for another team. You got to show the Washington Commanders kind of what the Lions showed you. Coming off a big offensive performance, put you back in your place to say, hey, that was a nice week, but we're the better football right. team. We're, we're like, they're a little bit further. Down. The Cardinals are down the road on their rebuild as opposed to the Commanders. Like, they had a really good Monday night football week, but uh, you, you can't let that happen. The, Jonathan Gannon has to, to show. His defensive chops, Nick Rollins, mm-hmm. and, and slow down Cliff's offense and Jaden Daniels uh, this upcoming week. But, you know, you start to look at it. Who are the Arizona Cardinals? As I look at this NFC landscape, and it's far more watered down than like the AFC. I think that's, mm-hmm. you know, the superior um, uh, conference here. I think that the Arizona Cardinals fall in. I think that they could very well make the case to be, you know, anywhere from like a top 10 to borderline top seven NFC team by the end of the season. I think that's a very interesting conversation, and we're going to have that conversation yeah. after I remind you guys about Empire today because if you're making a big decision when it comes to flooring, whether that's your personal home, whether you are a landlord, whether it's an apartment complex, whether you're a business owner, we have Empire Today flooring all over in our studios, and they have held up fantastically over the last couple of months since it was installed. You want to check out Empire Today. Easy, quick, and convenient are easy, quick, and convenient words to describe Empire Today, but there's so much more below the surface there because they're not going to come out out there like some businesses do and say we guarantee the absolute lowest price and you maybe at first you're like I don't want to hear that but then when you actually think about it it's like hey I'm going to guarantee you the cheapest crappiest car we can possibly <laughs> find and we're going to get it to you quick but then you know 20 miles down the road it's yeah. going to break down and you're screwed you don't want to do that with your flooring you want to have the best quality flooring and they'll only install floors in your home that they would put in their own and not every company can guarantee that plus they're going to give you an opportunity to figure out what's right for you whether it's in-home estimates for free or their virtual floor visualizer you hold your phone up you see how it looks you don't make a bad decision that has everybody mad at you because you picked the wrong floors they don't match the cabinets and now you spent all that money for something that doesn't look good that's not not going to happen with Empire today. Plus, you can save a little money. Schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners can receive a $350 off discount when they use promo code PHNX. Some restrictions do apply, so make sure you go see empiretoday.com slash PHNX for details. All right, let's go NFC West, and then let's look at the oh NFC as a whole. Three one and two teams in the NFC yeah. West after the Rams did beat the 49ers in what was a pretty big upset last week. And of course, Seattle sitting at the top at three and oh. Obviously, we're only three weeks into the season, but I am gonna ask you if you had to guess where the Arizona Cardinals fell as terms of the hierarchy in the NFC West, where would that be? Wow. Um, as much as I'm not buying in on the Seattle Seahawks three and oh start to the season, they've faced some pretty bad teams. Bo Nix in his first start. Just most recently took on a two-a-less Miami Dolphins team. Who are playing like maybe the worst team yeah, in football. Yeah, some of the worst football in 2024. So taking advantage of that. Um, I'm not you know, completely going to buy the Seahawks, but I, I think the Arizona Cardinals could make their way with the injuries that the Rams have s- sustained on the offensive line to their passing attack, on the defensive side of the football. I can't see them playing consistent football mm-hmm. the next, what, six to eight weeks and that's going to put them in a a tough spot i think the arizona cardinals have an ability to get as high as two but should feel finish no lower than three so they're they're hanging out i mean there's only four teams but they're they're somewhere in the middle absolutely and and that's what you i think you wanted to see i don't think anybody envisioned division winning arizona cardinals in 2024 no especially not with the with the 49ers who haven't looked great but of course are always the san francisco 49ers one and two is not always going to be representative of just how good they are i will say they have the second best point differential through three weeks out of the nfc west teams with plus 18 seattle plus 30 but like you mentioned arizona strength of schedule compared to the seahawks wildly different yes You're, again you said two contenders detroit and yeah. buffalo and, and then a rams team that maybe they won't play consistent football but i think will also fall into that frisky category partially because of their coaching but yeah. you know even with injuries in the nfl like losing cooper cups a big deal it's going to take your your ceiling and, and lower it drastically and of course they've They've gone through a lot of injuries, but having Matt Stafford and having Sean McVay, you're, you're going to at least compete 
Sure. Most weeks, unless you're playing the Arizona Cardinals, <laughs> you're going to compete most weeks. And sometimes you're going to take down right. a 49ers. And, and I think it would be interesting is as you get through these next couple of weeks for the Cardinals. I mean, until you play the Dolphins, you got you got three good teams coming up, yeah. including the 49ers. Of course, you're playing the commanders who maybe goods an overstatement, but they're coming off their best win of the season. They're riding high with Jalen Daniels. 49ers or the 49ers. They might have a week to get right. You come in and you go on the road at Levi Stadium. No Kittle. You got I don't, you know, McCaffrey's not even in the country. Yeah, like, McCaffrey is not in the country. He's in talk Germany. Talk about being able to catch maybe the 49ers at the right time yeah. at home. I mean, that that's an opportunity. That's that's one of those opportunities that you'd love to see the Cardinals take advantage of. And like that can be kind of the telltale signs of, okay, where is this team? Mm-hmm. Can they take advantage of teams that are down and knock them out? Like that's that's gonna be the key to what we can learn about this Cardinals team. Like are they going to just, hey, it's the the name on the jersey. We think w- the Niners are a good team going into 2024, so they're just going to win that game. It's like, no, Jonathan Gannon's team's going to go in there and steal a win sure. you know, from a down Niners team. I think that that's what the Cardinals need to show us, you know, wh- where they can kind of stack some wins on the schedule that people didn't necessarily think they were capable of getting. And the next time you're playing the Rams and the 49ers the last two weeks of the season. Yeah. Right. So it's going to be a long time before you have a chance to do that, that, hey, we're down, but we win. You go down when we go up one as far as NFC West standings go. Then you take on the Packers on the road as well in Lambeau. Never an easy game. That's a really good team. And and that's a team playing well. And that's a team with a quarterback in Malik Willis that's also playing really well right now as well. Might be Jordan Love by then, but might be regardless. You don't know. They're they're set up for success either way. If it's Malik Willis by then, like if he's a quintessential backup quarterback, he might be there might be enough tape out there to where you can slow him down. Um I think you'd take that, right? You would take take Malik Willis over love. No doubt about it. So, but, but yeah, still playing, it's, still yeah. playing good enough, and overall as a team, probably on the road. one of the best rosters in the league. Yeah. I mean, that's back to back weeks between the Niners mm-hmm. and Packers, where they they are beyond their stars. Like they're just well coached, good rosters, regardless of you know who's available, who's not. And on the road as well, in two tough places to play. Then you take on the Chargers, who are also a challenge game. in their own right. Hmm? You gotta win that game. You have to. Well, the thing is, after that, you have Dolphins, Bears, Jets. Yeah. Though those are three games that you the could battle s- of the mid the yeah. three week <laughs> you could you could see you could yeah. see them you know put off three wins in a row taking down the Dolphins and the Bears and, yeah. and then the Jets then you're taking on the Seahawks right yep. and at that point who knows what the Seahawks Back are going to be reality, doing Back hopefully. to re- hopefully Viking Seahawks again right so that two game stretch against the Seahawks where they have two out of three that could be big for NFC West standings but I just think overall like this the schedule in general if you can beat the Commanders. I want to say you can beat the 49ers and Packers. You need to beat the Commanders. You You need need to get back to even the two and two because then you go on the road within the division. You go to Lambeau. I mean, and if you drop to two and four, then you're taking on the Chargers at two and four with a lot of pressure to try to get to three. And four. Yeah. Then you're back home as well to get to three and four. And, if, and you have a little bit of reprieve after that as well. But at a certain point, you go two and two and four, two and five, two and six. Yeah. Then this season starts to take a turn but that it, you didn't expect. For yeah, three the weeks. reality is, is like you, you if you are able to navigate the first 10 weeks of the season around 500. You're going to be in a good spot. I know that we're talking about a couple three and O teams in the Seahawks and the Vikings. I, I'm like, don't don't buy into that completely. Those should be games that the Cardinals should be competitive in. And then you have the opportunity to stack wins against Patriot team, a Panthers team, mm-hmm. a Rams team. I think by then, who knows if Stafford's going to be available? Who knows what's up right. with the 49ers at so, that point? If yeah. they're healthy or if they're good enough to yeah. where they don't even have to play. I mean, you you have a chance at the end of the season to go on a run that even if it doesn't right. mean playoffs, it means going into the offseason with confidence. So you mentioned earlier, and this is what we're going to end on. Okay. Cardinals top 10 could be top seven team in the NFC. Obviously, a lot of teams at one and two. There's only three games, so there's lots of ties. Mm-hmm. But the Cardinals are 10th right now, tied with the Rams, 49ers, Giants, Panthers, Cowboys, Bears, all at one and two, just below the Falcons, Packers, Lions, Eagles, Bucks, Commanders. Uh, again, like, th- they should be better than Atlanta this year, yeah. in my opinion. They Look, should be better than Atlanta this crowded, year. It's crowded, it bunches up there at the back end. Like, mm-hmm. once you start to talk about the back end of the top 10 NFC teams, what's going to differentiate, you know, the teams that are 7th, and knocking on the door in the postseason, mm-hmm. and the teams that are 10th, 
looking at the outside on the outside looking in are the teams that are going to win the games that they're supposed to beat and then take it and then surprise along the way. So like the Arizona Cardinals, like I think could very easily cruise into an eight, nine or nine and eight season. But can they win the games to get to 10 and seven instead? Mm -hmm. And like that, that'll put you right there where you want to be with a surprise postseason berth. But like, can you separate yourself from the Falcons of the world? You know, from uh, from the Rams, from the Giants. I mean, yeah. I think I think the only team below the Cardinals right now, and by below, they're all at one and two. But this is just how ESPN.com has them ranked. But the only team around with the Cardinals right now at one and two that I think are better than them, especially if fully healthy, is the 49ers. Yeah. Other than that, they should be better than the Rams, the Giants, the Panthers, the yeah. Cowboys, the Bears. They should be better than the Falcons, who are also one and two. You talked about Green Bay, Detroit. Those are your two and ones. Commanders at two and one. Who knows what's going to go on with the Saints? I know that they've had an absolutely electric offense, but is that just one of those really weird stories at the start of the season? Really kind of right. Three. And then Seattle sitting at three and zero, and Minnesota sitting at three and zero as well. I think Minnesota's is much more replicable than Seattle's, but there are a couple teams above Arizona right now, as they sit at ten, that that you could realistically see them move in front of, as long as a this team continues to develop and get better throughout yeah. the season. B they have that consistency. To go along with it, and then see. I mean, I'm sure that there's a player or two that haven't been able to step up in the first couple of weeks that we're going to see more of. But there, there is a chance here that you're looking at the seventh, maybe best case scenario, the sixth or fifth best team in the NFC. But that's that's best best case scenario. I think I think frisky is the word that I'm I'm going to end on. This right. this team is absolutely frisky, and sometimes those frisky teams put together more wins than a lot of people expect. Keep so, that energy. Keep hey, that frisky energy. Yeah, and and that means this it's Sunday, okay here. this Sunday, and every Sunday is a really big game mm-hmm. because they could win any of these games, mm-hmm. but will they? We don't know. We can't predict the future, but I can tell you for sure that PHNX Cardinals is the number one place for you to follow along in the present. Of course, you can do that by hitting the subscribe button on PHNX Sports and giving this a like as well. Some of you Cardinals fans might be hearing this in the PHNX Cardinals feed, so you're probably subscribed already, and you've definitely already rated it five stars and left a comment about just how beautiful Bo is. Make sure you do that if you haven't done that already. Of course, you can follow Bo at Bo Brock on Twitter. You can follow PHNX Cardinals at PHNX underscore Cardinals. Pre-game, halftime, post-game show. Mina Kimes is going to be on this week. Michael Wilson the week after that. You guys just do it big, don't Baldy, you? Baldy, yeah. I mean, Baldy, oh my gosh. It's, on, you man. have so many guests, I can't even <laughs> keep them all straight at this point. Talking cards ball. You love to see it. You love to hear it. Only place you can do it right here, PHNX Sports. Bo, Johnny, Damon, cast of characters as well. You don't want to miss it. And of course, we will be back later this week with another edition of Southwest Buys. You can follow me at E-R-I-K-R-U-B-Y on Twitter. Catch me on PHNX Sun Devils five days a week at 1.30, especially this week. No game this weekend, so 1.30 every day of the week talking about the 3-1 and one Arizona State Sun Devils. And we'll be back talking Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, Cliff Kingsbury. This Thursday, it's another edition of Southwest Bias. Get that stuff out of here. It's Southwest Bias.